Welcome to Meddling with Nature, audio-only vlog. I'm Jeremy Johnson. I'm Karina Young. I'm devastating Dan Draperies. It's your turn, Mike. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over you. She's new. <laughs> what? She's I, our special guest. We I get to introduce her last. last. How are we not going to pre-discuss that? How is everybody How else you know? know? We all knew. I, that's what I'm saying. How did you people know? I mean, I didn't know, but also I like yelling at you. Mike? What's your name? I'm Nate Wessel. <laughs> and <laughs> special guest... Tracy Blankmeyer. Say it louder. There's... Oh, Tracy Blankmeyer. Say it like you mean it. <laughs> Say it real. Hey, oh, real, real. I'm Tracy Blankmeyer. <laughs> so, uh, it's been a while. I'm unhappy that we're all back around the circle again. Except for Nate, of course, who now lives in Toronto and doesn't have any friends. Um... And we haven't quite figured out how to remotely get those mouth noises in here. Yeah. We probably just have, like, haven't recorded it for, like, an hour. We just backtrack it. <laughs> fun. That's true. Yeah. So we went to the Museum Center of Cincinnati, which is, is basically kind of a mall of museums. you got the Children's Museum, the Natural History Museum, the Cincinnati Museum. Isn't there another one? Is there? I don't know. Maybe. I think there's three. We, we primarily deal with the Natural History Museum. And uh, we were part of a maker fair. Um, a mini maker fair. A mini maker mini fair. Maker, yes. Registered trademark. Don't leave that out. We don't want to get sued. And uh, so all of us were there. <laughs> we had two booths. One of it was, one of them was, was geared towards vending our wares, and the other one was educational in nature. So, you know, like bones and things that kids could touch, though it evolved into the touching. It wasn't originally supposed to be touching. <laughs> but after so many things get broken, you just say, you know what's broken? Do whatever the fuck you want. Um, they, they touched the porcupine a lot. I noticed that and you weren't the stopping end, them. In the end, I stopped telling them not to touch the porcupine <laughs> because I got this real sick glee every time one of them did. Uh, but we got... It was a good experience because a lot of times we're working with adults or, you know, grown-ass adults. Um, and this time, working two days in a fucking row with children gave us a, a unique perspective. About I like it how you say normally we work with adults because I remember one time when me and Mike were put in charge of like a million children for eight hours at the museum center. Well, oh, so, I was working with the parents, so I was yeah. I was getting them checked out. Yeah, I was, see, I was swiping the cards. Center goes, normally we work with screaming children. When, <laughs> yeah. As far as the museum center goes, we're normally working with screaming children. <laughs> so basically, uh, working with teenagers to early 20s versus young children and their parents primarily that that's that's a huge one because it's kids with their parents who have a variety of different skill sets in regards to to teaching their children what and to do and not to do but yeah we've discovered that there's two different parenting styles yes there's the one where um for example one child walked up and was looking at what we had on our vendor table and he was asking me questions which we're going to address later but eventually he just stepped back and went this is very disturbing and his dad was like oh my god I'm so sorry and I was like it's not a big deal it is kind of disturbing like you know like I <laughs> well, get you it you have it's a cool. big old tank of raccoon guts right <laughs> over here <laughs> why are you freaking out dude and then there's the parent who just like turns around and walks away, and the and leaves their kid with yeah. us, right? yeah. because they're disturbed, leaves their child with yeah. us like to the, explain yeah. the tank full of raccoon guts. Yeah, <laughs> like the 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 one the last time that we were at the museum center, the guy who walked in with his four kids and just was like, "Here's my kids." Yeah, he was like, uh, "What are you guys doing down here?" And I started to explain, and he was just he kind of like interrupted, and was like, "Well, here's my kids," and just like walked away. <laughs> I was like, "What?" Yeah. It's the last time they <laughs> like, saw their father. I paid for a summer camp and we didn't show up, so I just figured I'd bring them now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Lord. Um, so, yeah, kids say the darndest things, uh, but oftentimes they ask exactly the same questions. So this is going to be kind of a frequently asked questions uh, podcast in which we will address uh, the uninitiates questions of, about taxidermy, preservation, dead things. And reality. Reality. This is this is a podcast about reality. Is it, is. Is it real? Is reality real? Is, is anything real? Is anything really real? Mm -hmm. Try to keep it real can, compared to what? Can we, can we go around and everyone ask the questions? I think we should. Okay. Is it real? Is that real? 
Is that real? Is that real? This is real. That was real. That was real. That was real. That what was real? <laughs> <laughs> that was our two days basically summed into one question. Is that real? Um, so, uh, apparently, I, I'm still a little <laughs> actually confused about, about what they were even asking about what is real. Like, well, so one guy, gotta, one guy gotta, actually asked if the, uh, the juvenile uh, lion skeleton or spine was 3D printed. Yes. Which was, uh, like, the most, like, well, advanced is really? that real question. Right. <laughs> like, it was still the same question. Oh, but yeah. it was, was that, like... Was that question even real? Right. Yeah. Is it, like, are you... Yeah. Like, is, <laughs> is this yeah. real life? Now we know what it means. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, I adapted that later when it was, like, the, 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 uh, the you know, the, the raccoon organ system or the, the taxidermied raccoons or whatever else. And I was like, well, we haven't yet started 3D printing these things. And... But yeah, and the result from the kids was oftentimes like, oh, well, that's too bad. Right, right. Well, my argument was it was 3D printed just using DNA. Yes. So I'm I'm sure that went real far. (laughs) He was like, well, yeah, I guess. (laughs) Can you you remind me, what was the Rene Descartes reference you were using with a fucking six-year-old? Well, so, (laughs) Rene Descartes um, said... I think I think, or rather, he said, "I think, therefore, I am." And I, I, I felt like he was taking it a bit too far. So, I, so when the kid said, "Is this real?" I said, "Well, Rene Descartes said, I think, therefore, I am.' But I think that he took it a little bit too far because I think that all you can really say is, "I think, I think, therefore, I think I am." There's no real way to objectively prove it. And then he looked at his dad, and his dad looked at me, and, and his had, dad goes, "He doesn't understand." It. And then they <laughs> walked away. His dad said that to him. He doesn't understand. And, and you couldn't even get the dad to say, like, uh, you lost me at Dick Hard. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right? It's like, lost at Dick Hard. Right? Bring like, Dick Hard. She doesn't understand what you're saying, sir. Quit being so tricky, my child. Bring Dick Hard. So, I, I think that we got a lot of these sorts of questions at uh, our Bug Fest thing, too. Is this real? Is like, I, and, and I... Oftentimes, I became... Dan, you walked in in the morning of the second day, and I was in my incline slope because, yes. yeah, um, at my Wait. table with all my crap, and everybody else was at the merch booth doing their thing, and Enjoying I, life. Enjoying life, I'm sure. That seat did give you a bit of vertigo. Yes, it did. Uh, and I, I, I told you that I was having some issues with the question, is this real? This was before the thing even started. <laughs> what was it that happened? Like, I don't even actually remember, but the first family that came by... <laughs> I can't remember it exactly, what but, like, a kid said, like, is this real? And you just, like, blew up on it. <laughs> and it was, like, 9... Or, like, it was open at 11. It was, it was like, 11, 11 that morning, and... <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was what you told me when I showed up. You were like, you said the same story, and you were like, the kid said, "Is this real?" And then you just replied, "What do you think?" <laughs> yes, what it was. Yeah, that I was actually, exactly it. Was. <laughs> but the way you said it, even to me, yeah, no, it was like when course. I was there, you and it's it a look. Yeah, it's a, the look on your face. I was just like, I'm sorry, I don't want to be here. I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean to come over to your booth. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Because our booth was Please actually, it was at the entrance of the Natural History Museum. Right so outside the ice cream shop, which was nice. Right across from the ice yes. cream shop, yeah. Full visibility. Was that when Dan told you you needed to go and take a time out? Yes, <laughs> they were. Yeah, I took over from there. <laughs> four minutes, really four minutes in. Four minutes in. Take a break. <laughs> mm. um, there what was, do you think? <laughs> yeah. There was a kid who kept asking Mike if everything was real. He pointed to everything on the table. Do you remember this, Mike? Yeah. And then the, the mom. The mom yeah. yeah. Like what is it? Well, it was like he's pointing at every single thing and then I was like sitting there like working on something like and so I wasn't really paying attention. I just could hear the kid like going, Is that real? What about that? Is that real? How about that? Is that real? Is that real? Is that real? Is that real? And I think that the kid asked you at one point if you killed the things or something. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I got that question a bunch. Yeah. Did you kill it? Did you kill it? Did you kill it? Are Did you, you them? kill it? Is it dying? Are you killing it right now? <laughs> Am I killing it by touching it? Like... <laughs> but in the end, the mom like points at one of the the pins that's like holding the insects, and says, "Is that real?" And then Mike said, "No." Yeah, she goes, Is that, "Are these pins real?" I said, "Actually, the pins are all them." <laughs> And then doesn't the kid just try and grab yeah. him? Yes, and then, yes, and then the kid, like, literally, so the, the kid had asked all those questions, hadn't touched anything, 
But yeah, after that, then there was the moment where the kid reaches over the table for the pile of pins, and all five people are like, no, 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 and like jump in, and the mom was like, we're out of here, and she just fucking whisked that kid away. Yeah. Probably because she saw her prices in the vendor booths. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what about the uh, did you kill it question? So this is a frequently asked question. Well, the funny thing is, I don't think I answered any questions because as soon as I would start speaking, they would just ask, is it real, and point to something else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that kid asked me if sharks were real. <laughs> Great white sharks, specifically. <laughs> like, he, he, like, his like, dad, was, his dad was ignoring the hell out of he him. He just so, branched like, out he, into... He, well, he did, this like, guy knows what's real. I'm asking. Yeah, no, like, like once I, yeah, once I pointed out what was real, then he started like asking me, like, like he'd be like, "Can yeah. I?" He'd be like, "Excuse me, excuse me, can I ask you something?" Yeah. And like his dad was ignoring the hell out of him, like staying over the other side of the booth, and like he was just like, "Is is great white sharks real?" <laughs> it's great. And I was like, "Yes, they are." He's like, "Really?" And then he'd like sit for a second and think about, it, and he'd come back with another one, and like oh. he went through multiple animals. <laughs> oh, man. He's paying attention, you know. That was nice. Once he understood the concept of reality. Yeah. No, I, I thought I couldn't believe that. I mean, they, they did the "is it real" thing, and then I went through the museum, and of course, I, I fucking did that. I said out loud, like, not even thinking, like, this can't be. Real. You came back. And yeah, <laughs> and I told you guys, and I was so embarrassed, and I was like. I'm pretty sure when you come to a museum, you're just brainwashed. That's all. That's the only thing you can say. You buy your ticket, and they're like, "Guess what's real?" Like they just <laughs> they just put it in there, and you can, that's all you say the whole time you're at a museum. Is it's this like, real? Well, like, they have one artificial thing, a yeah. single artificial thing at every museum it. that you have to yeah, find. Exactly. And here's the thing too, because when we're looking, especially like natural history museums, for the most part, you got a lot of taxidermy. You know, you've got uh, not so much with our museum center, but I don't necessarily that. I don't think that plays so much into it. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But, you know, when you're looking at uh, dinosaur skeletons at uh, the Royal Ontario Museum or even the Field Museum and stuff like that, how much of that is real? Yeah. And when we mean real, we mean the fossilized remains of a dinosaur. It's like, oh, wait a minute, fossilized remains? Well, no, they're not really bones. Right, they're not real. They're, not, they're, they're nature's cast of bones. The bone doesn't exist anymore. It's like, okay, so this is, these are the actual fossils. It's like, well, actually... These are these are casts from the fossil. They're actually plaster or, or styrofoam, and then they're painted with a patina to look like that. It's like, well, why is that? Because they're too heavy to be on display, really. And for the researchers, we want these these fossils to uh, be available. To, to be available and, and research. You can't study a, a brachiosaurus's uh, skull if you have to get a cherry picker to do it. Right. So I mean, natural history museums are kind of a land of illusion, but no, they're not real. <laughs> a lot of stuff it's, isn't. They were the realest thing there. That's right. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's when like we're looking at, at museums and stuff like this, and we'll get on to, to those other questions, but it is it is interesting. I, I think it just sparks the question in me. I don't think that that's what the kids meant. I think that the kids are used to way too much CGI and way too much um, fiction right. in reality, in a three-dimensional yeah. world, um, which is exactly why we as artists and craftspeople, for me at least, have, have had a lot of anger towards 3D printing and laser cut stuff. Especially like architectural models and things like that. Right. Uh, but is that me being behind the times? Or, you know, like, it's the same question of um, when you're looking at Star Wars, the, the first series and then the reboot, um, one is using just Muppets and the other one is using CGI. Right. Uh, which one, which one's real? And I don't blame George Lucas for going that route. And anyway, that that gets us off. I mean, he can't tangent, really get real dinosaurs though. So, but yeah, but but, but of, like Jim Henson's going to be Muppets, a little bit of a you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, and I mean, do you think that if fifty years ago we would have done the same thing at a natural history museum? That we would get the question, is this real? I don't think so. No, yeah. People well, would be actually interested. Well, I think everything was real at that point. If you right. define right. real as the actual genuine yeah. article. Except, except dinosaurs. Except yeah. dinosaurs. Dinosaurs aren't real. We all know that. <laughs> Having been to the creation museum. <laughs> Dan say, and we're back. And we're back. Thank you. <laughs> so. Anyway. Did you kill it? Did you kill it? Did you kill it? Oh, Wait, we're doing fire. this. We're doing this. Everybody's got to say it. Did you kill it? Did you kill it? Did you kill it? Did 
Did you? Did you? Did you kill that? Did you kill that? Did you kill that? You absolutely did. Did you kill that? Who killed that? Who killed that? Did you kill it with your bare hands? Who killed that? Can I kill it? It's gonna be killed again. I only taxidermy animals so I can shoot them twice. Because we don't, you know, like not a lot of our pieces, not any of our pieces, are, are trophy in in style at all. Right. Uh, so it's like, I, what I discuss. It's interesting that the, that I mean, because like like Tracy was saying earlier, that we didn't out at the vendor table. I didn't hear that question very much. We heard different kinds of questions that were leading to that, but we didn't really hear that specific question very much. However, when I was sitting at the table, I did hear that question a couple of times. Did you kill that? Or, you know, how did it die? Like, those kind of questions that were, like, leading to, like, saying, like, oh, obviously you killed that. Right. But, well, you know, it's real. Table, We've we established got... it's real. Where now did it? you kill it? Where does it go when it dies? Heaven? Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That's a loaded question, son. <laughs> well, mom, you want to help me out here? <laughs> yeah, like I well, need let me start to. out with your denomination. <laughs> Wait, uh, oh, you're shopping. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. You, you want to you want to come and instill moral experience. fiber into your own child? Not let me do it because I'm gonna fuck it up. I'm sure. <laughs> did anybody? Did anybody actually give a response? I did. I know I did uh, to, to that question because I is actually it dead? yeah. Well, no. Did you kill or did, it? Did you kill Cause it? Because I I often get really because I get that a lot too. Uh, I get a little violent about it. Well, I made the mistake. You're of saying, violent about not killing. <laughs> violent about the question. <laughs> okay. Well, we we made the joke one time where it was like, "Did you kill it?" Or I don't even remember what we said. But it was something about killing that kid's mom or something. Like, what? I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to fucking kill something, kid. You better step away from this table. And don't fucking touch that. No, but I did answer one time, mm-hmm. and I regretted it because I said, well, we didn't kill it. And what I meant was, somebody hit it with their car. And I went a step further, and I said, your mom might have killed it. Oh. Oh, yeah. I did that. I was, Damn. I was Were you sitting there, and the kid, the kid goes, <laughs> the kid looks at his mom and says, was it you or was it my, one of, some, one of the two of you was sitting there, and the kid looked at his mom and said something like, my mom ran over a squirrel in the driveway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then, and then he said, remember, and then he said another one. He was like, I "She know. killed a, she killed a squirrel in the driveway." And I, then her mom was like, "Shut up, don't tell him that." <laughs> she also hit a turtle. Like yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Brought up another thing. And then, and then I go, I was like, she was just like, that was a sad week or something." Like that. <laughs> I mean, in times like that, I look over and like, you know, and this is. I gotta say, I I always have my eyes on the road. I'm I've never hit an animal in my life. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Isn't that weird? So no, I didn't fucking kill yeah. it. No. So I um I thought I killed a kitten. Uh, <laughs> so I was driving I was driving to work, right? It's like you felt something in bed and you rolled over and then you I rolled, rolled over. over and it turned out someone else had killed a kitten and put it in my bed. No, um, it was so me. I was I was driving to work. Okay, uh, this was a while back and uh, I. Like I was early morning, so it was just my headlights, and I saw a bunch of kittens run across the road, and like I hit my brakes, but they were like right in front of my tires, and I heard, <laughs> and I was like, oh no! Did you, you just smash the groceries? But I, no, I was having a bad time. Like I went into work, and I told a guy <laughs> about it, and like he called me kitten killer for the next like four months. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like I. Uh, and so, like, the whole day I was bummed. I was like, what is wrong with modern society that we must hurry to our workplaces and kill kittens? <laughs> and so then I get home, and I'm driving back down the road, and I see a smashed uh, uh, walnut. <laughs> like, the whole walnut. Because the kittens were carrying walnuts. That, clearly, yeah. I, I ruined their dinner, for yeah. sure. So probably one of them died of starvation. But So, I, like, I saw a smashed walnut, and I saw another one that was whole, and I ran over it and made the exact same noise. I'm like, yes, exonerated. Oh, my God. It went... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly what walnuts exactly, sound like. Exactly, just like it. That's what walnuts do. <laughs> Is it dead or did you kill it? Do you want to? Do you want to explore? Did you kill it more? Did we kill that? Well, I tried to. Um, I tried to like hit it off at the pass. Like mm-hmm. I had sort of built up a little bit of patter where I was just going through all of the things that we had, and then it'd be here are the raccoons. That we have that are ethically harvested because they were roadkill. Yeah, harvest is a great word for that, too. isn't it? <laughs> like they <laughs> like were picked fresh from the roadkill vine. 
You know, and it, again, this gets into the ethics, moralities, and stuff like that. It's interesting, though. The way I'm starting to advertise myself and, and meddling with nature is a little different when dealing with with people. Because we've got um, a shout out to Morbid Anatomy. We've got a Morbid Anatomy six hour uh, workshop coming up on October 10th, and. I was looking at the resident taxidermist and, and everybody else that kind of does their workshops there, and they say ethically, ethically harvested or, or similar ethically things, sourced. no kill, ethically yeah. sourced, and part of the actual workshop is a discussion of what that means, and I, I'm very curious, because again, like even from the very beginning uh, of our little promo video, uh, most of these animals come from... Uh, Zoa slaughter, which is not a natural cause of death. It's just not. It, it is somebody killing somebody. Right. In the same way that somebody that, that's run somebody over for negligence is not going to get away with it by the law. And so, they don't get a whoopsie daisy. Uh, yeah, and, and also just all the mice that are being used for um, anthropomorphic taxidermy, they are meant as feeder mice. They're meant to be fed to snakes. Is that ethical? Oof. So the did you kill it thing oftentimes I think is very sensitive to me. So I guess the question is, did we kill it? Right. As a species. <clears throat> well, yeah. if it's if it's roadkill, road absolutely then obviously we did. So maybe the answer to the question is a question. And that that I explored around. I did I did play around with these kids a lot. Never mind that. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean that. I meant the screeching okay. tire. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like I was like something's getting murdered right now as we speak. <laughs> I'm not yeah, talking about response. diddling. Played with kids or something. <laughs> that's, that's what he said. And then he no, bought. he said I played around with kids. I've been playing around with kids. Cosby's been playing around with kids for years too. That's cool. right. Yeah. He played more around with grown ass. <laughs> well, no, you like, like, you like, I think you like. Oh, wait, the darn, the kids say the darndest it's, thing. I mean, it's grown enough. <laughs> even right. referenced Cosby. Kids the drink the darndest things. But their 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 soft little minds are not ready to discuss issues like that and neither are yeah. collegiate professors and that's that's I think something that we're finding is like I think that the culpability of death is a hard one I think you're not giving children enough credit I think that children can think for themselves and they can mm. decide what is right and what is wrong what they I mean because <laughs> you don't have a child you don't have a child hey mine cannot think whether or not something's right or wrong but she does know that Jeremy does not kill animals <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's I mean, but you know, like you exposing them to ideas about death and about like what is right and wrong about killing things and mm -hmm. you know things like how we treat nature yeah. in, in an urban environment. You know, because like you know, kids who live in the country like experience like death all the time. Well, of course, and yes. kids who live in places that aren't urban, like we're living in. They experience nature, and they know what nature is, and they know what death is. And I think that the point, one of the one of the the main things about mountain nature that I like is that we're like we're trying to think about this idea of the natural landscape of the urban environment. You know, mm -hmm. getting a, a raccoon getting run over by a car—that's something that's part of our natural landscape. Yeah. In our urban environment, you know, like, what, and, and and that's again a little shout out. I don't, you know, because nobody really the art academy knows this podcast. The po <laughs> God podcast, God cast, cast pod exists, but the one person that I'm looking at for internship, um, that was that was one of the topics that, that she was really interested in was not only drawing but sculpting roadkill as it sits on the side of the road. That's real good. Um, Especially since you know Mike's necropagnosia stuff is is uh, is all out there, and so that and I said that that was directly one of our plans was to begin to really, and we have done some of that with the German Shepherd, though it was like for a horror flick. But um, but she her thoughts were in exactly the right place, and uh, and it, it is not an easy question, and, and part of the urban landscape, yes, uh, but but then when we're looking at trying to discuss this stuff with kids. It goes back to chicken stars again. Uh, in that, did you kill it? You ask. You ask the same questions like, "Look at your fucking lunchable boy. Yeah. <laughs> did you kill it? You're eating it. And do by eating it, you can't kill it." Yeah. Do you think there's an interesting, um, as you said, the urban piece and you know, kind of the 
the Appalachian roll piece, mm -hmm. there is, it'd be interesting to see what children, what their um, reactions would be if it was in a different kind of environment. Um, like know. going into Appalachian schools and seeing what happens? Yeah. Or craft fairs in Appalachian environments and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, just to see, just to actually experience what that would be like. You know, Abigail, um, my daughter, her name's Abigail, she's six right now. But when she was four, her grandmother died. And we went, you know, to the back hills of Kentucky. And one of the rules is that grandma or whoever, they're put in the ground and covered up with somebody in the family watching. Generally speaking, it's one of the men of the family that's there, like Lordy never watching, but all the men disappeared. So there it was, my mother, I, and Abigail, and we watched Grandma be shoveled into the ground. Mm -hmm. And lots of interesting conversations in her little small brain, you know. But then you look around at some of the children running around, and you're like, yeah, this is just, this is just norm. This is Sunday. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is Sunday. You know, yeah. it yeah. would be it would be interesting to see what response yeah. unurbanized children would have to some of the things. And that we had a bit of that with the raccoons because usually what we would have is, uh, you know, I saw them running around in my trash the other day. Right, <laughs> just like the urbanization right? part of it. But then there were a couple <laughs> times. It, it didn't happen many, but it happened a few times. Like, you know, raccoon tastes pretty good. And we had to start to have a conversation about, yeah, yeah, if you, you, you get the, the grease off correctly, you know, and like talking about cooking and stuff like that. But it was it was very interesting because you could tell there, yeah, yeah, there, there was some uh, Appalachian, because we're right on that Mason-Dixon line, too. Oh, my God, are we? <laughs> um, and again, I think I think when we're looking at the, the, the specimens that we were producing or provided for them, it, it did go into the kind of questions like, Wow, you're kind of fucked up. You're going to do this with raccoons. It's like, would you ever, would you ever do this with a person? I'm like, well, yes. Which brings up another question. Which is, <clears throat> would you ever taxidermy a human? Would you ever stuff a person? Have you ever stuffed a person? Is that a pickup you one? have. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I, I would absolutely work with with a human. Is it legal to taxidermy a human? Um, I don't think it is in the, the states. It's, it's, the point of this is that we're all supposed to ask. Them. No, oh, sorry, sorry. You're missing the point. All right, one more Let's game. Say when, one one more time. game. Three, two. Can you taxidermy a human? Can you stuff a person? What's in a person? Can you put stuff in it? Would you desecrate a human body? Graham, Graham, no. <laughs> <laughs> So the question is, number one, would we? As spokesman for Meddling with Nature, I will say, absolutely. Any, any dissent? Any dissent? No, I, I, you know, recently, I shout out to Stuff You Should Know. I yeah. just listened, they just uh, put out, I don't know if it was like an older podcast that they like reissued or if it was like a new one, but they just did a, like they just came out with a podcast of um, uh, donating your body yep. to science. And... The things that they were talking about, they were not talking about taxidermy and humans. Of course. <laughs> However, it because of what I do, I immediately was listening to everything that they were saying about like the laws about donating your body. Mm -hmm. And from what they were saying, it sounds like someone could donate their body to us. It is true. Yeah, I actually found somebody last night that is willing to. Yeah, they yeah. always say. They always ask for their dogs and cats to be stuffed after death, too. Nobody ever follows. Well, if we get the paperwork lined up, I think I got a candidate. Well, there's, the thing. but according to this, there's really not much paperwork. It's mostly just like, do you want to give your body to these people? And as long as your next of kin is okay with it, and you I mean, don't, don't, you put it in your fucking will, right. and you know, do your pre needs thing or whatever. Whatever that's going to be. The well, I don't know how the body yeah, farm works. You guys know about the body farm? Well, the body and farm that is a donation to science. Is it, so it counts as science. Yes, it's we, very are, different. Than, are we pseudo science or how they have finished? they have their own actual uh, yes. donation program? Right, like it's very direct in the same way that Gunther von Hagen's does with Body World, a very direct donation program. But that's that's according right. to. Did you listen to this podcast? I haven't. Listened? No. So it from what they were saying, it sounds like that's kind of a thing. Is that there's not like a governing body that like there's with organ not. donation that like there's like a an organization that handles it and covers it with. Whole body I say donation. It covers it. Covers it up. <laughs> I like, well, I like that there's body, a body governing body. 
That's true, too. <laughs> There's a corpus to cover the corpus. Right. Cover the corpse. <laughs> and it's made out Corp of sheep skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, with whole body donations, there's not, like, somebody saying, like, you can, you can't, you can, you can't. And depending on who you're donating it to, they're going to, like, provide, like, you know, the the... the the transportation of the body and blah 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 and like they'll return the you know remains or whatever that they use um but it from what it sounded like to me and I would have to look more into it legally but like it sounded like somebody could technically donate their body to us and we could harvest their body and do whatever we wanted with it as long as we didn't break any rules about you know selling human body parts well those and rules are laws and Which, that's those, a different thing. Yeah, and, and when you're looking at what type of establishment is authorized to handle human tissue, mm. right, is much different than osteological remains, because any yeah. of us can handle osteological remains. You can buy it on eBay. That's fine. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the laws are very, very uh, complicated and, and slippery. When we're looking at can you actually taxidermy a human, in an organization the size of this, technically, yes. But there's a lot of technical parts to it. Uh, number one, yes, the family has to be involved. Next of kin, all, basically, all, you know, direct family has to be on board with it. But even then, for something like what we're doing, you've got to get the coroner to release the body. That's usually going to be the trick. Yeah, that's going to be. Is the cor- you know, like the Cincinnati corner? There. No, right. you're not going to know. But no. in Appalachia? Yeah, Appalachia. Yeah, probably. probably. So could it legally be done? Sure. Is it easy? Absolutely not. Is there a precedent? No. If there's not a precedent, then... And it, we might it, get turned into an interesting legal case. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so there are examples of this having happened in the world. Um, of course, Gunther von so Hagen call is a good. To lawyers. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, I've asked Matt about it, our, our local lawyer. <laughs> and by our local, local, we mean most of us in the group know him. Yes, <laughs> yes. And he wrote my prenup. <laughs> and he also wrote a letter to my former landlord. Yeah, see, he's a good guy. That's yeah. great. And he, he was be able like to get almost corner, uh-huh. wasn't he? He was almost corner. He was running for Newport Yeah, he corner. was running for Newport Oh, and then we had to discuss this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did this just you could have gotten all the bodies. Why did you get us a blue yeah. yeah. That was yeah. the greatest joke. We, we had a lot of mortician jokes that were ready. Uh, <laughs> we lost that election, but if he had gotten it, then... We'd be flushed with corpses. <laughs> We'd be flushed with corpses. <laughs> That's but probably why he didn't get elected, because they knew. I know. They, they knew. And there's oh, a lot of, there's a lot of state, state issues. It's like... We managed to, to deal with a Bengal tiger, you know, but dealing with a human, that does get a little bit more tricky because the state line issues, the transportation, needing authorization from, I don't know, the CDC and all this other stuff, uh, especially unfixed specimens. Like, if we were a mortuary, we could probably get away with it with permissions and coroner support, but it, it's not a simple case. So uh, let's say I was to just happen upon some human well, you should call the police. Yes. If I decided to not do that. Oh, wait, wait. We're recording a podcast. A new person has entered. Oh, the good Lord. All right. Now we got to introduce somebody else. Shit. What's your name? Spe- extra, extra special guest. And you got to be loud because his microphone's all the way over there. It's a Kane Magdalene. Kane Magdalene. Well. Say it like you mean it. I, I wouldn't I, sit on that log. I'm not going to. See, this is a, this is a <laughs> fireside chat. We got... We got people from the neighborhood just coming in, <laughs> except that it's his house. But other than that, no, no, I'm from the neighborhood. Don't, don't, don't ruin the mystique. Can you figure out why they're playing Pearl Jam so loud so far away? Because people miss the '90s and they're trying to relive it. That's <laughs> yeah, why. I know. This is the, in the middle of the ghetto and second playing Pearl Jam third really time loud, this far week away. That the '90s and missing the '90s has been brought up to me. Yeah, because we're getting old. All Anyhow. I'm gonna say is, is that Beavis and Butthead reappeared on Netflix, and I'm assuming that that's because we missed the '90s nostalgia. Mark McGrath has a Kane Magdalene. Show. That's that's my name. <laughs> Direct all your emails. Can to you him. do like a little? Uh, <laughs> so uh, so Mike. one Mike. Oh, oh, well, okay, oh wait, sorry, I, sorry. I, I, me, I lost track. Let me ask you a more specific. Let me ask you something. I'm, let me ask you something. <laughs> so I happen upon some human remains. Uh-huh. And you decide not to call the police. Because it's only part of a human, 
And I have permission from the rest of that human that they're like, I didn't want this. It's right. Oh, like, oh, like my arm question. fell off. Very yes. good question. My arm right? fell, or my tooth fell out of my face. But like more than that, face. like I'm talking like there's tissue on it and there's bone and okay. this person's like. So my arm fell out off, care. and I I left it there at your house. Yeah. Like my arm fell off, and I was but, like, but I, I gotta really, go to the no, hospital no, get no, this no, taken like care of. I don't know you. My arm all. in the alley. Yes. Well, you don't. How do you know? Not know me, and I gave you permission to take the third arm. party. I know somebody who knows somebody. What? Listen. Is this a real thing? Yes. Oh, God. Okay. You mean like a tip of the thumb or something like that? No. Okay. Because you know what? Actually, we're going to That's go ahead. Still- yeah. We're not actually going to include that in this podcast. So That's come what? up with a hypothetical. That's getting edited out. And so, Mike, you were saying? Robot no, Mike, what you are so bad arm? at this. Okay. And Mike, you were asking yeah, about what, what if you happened. what if you had some body part that somebody gave you uh-huh. or something, or you found human remains. Fuck it. Okay. No. So Mike found an arm in an alley. So he found an arm in an alley. Now what? Shrug. This is a choose your own third ad- party. This is a choose your own adventure post. <laughs> so you found an arm in an alley. So, so a drug addict <laughs> walked up to you in an alley and handed you an arm. <laughs> and I said, "Whoa, pal!" <laughs> he just said, "Don't let it touch me." <laughs> Yeah, Everything he touches turns to gold. That's a bad. That's this a bad is a analogy. terrible. I found a body part, and through a third party, I found out just it body that part. the owner of that body part didn't want it anymore. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, "Well, can I have it?" But I didn't get to talk to that person. That person had already given it up. The n- next person in line was like, "I don't even know why I have it, frankly." Will you take it? And I was like, please. And right now it's in my freezer. Is that legal? <laughs> is that real? It's it is that real. Can I boil that safely? <laughs> Once you boil it, it'll be fine. Should I stand legal. with my mouth wide open over top of the steam coming out of the pot? Is that bad? Um, you might depends get on, Yeah, it depends on... You're you know. going to want to take a toilet paper roll? And right. And throw some dry in there, right. And then... Put that over your mouth and your nose. Yeah. And then just snort them human remains. <laughs> See, it really does go into tissue. Um, yeah, because you mentioned tissue earlier, tissue. and that seems scary. Do you have a pressure kicker? I don't. I do. I do. I use it for bones. <laughs> really? Yeah. I use mine for beans, but, you know. Beans and bones. Very, <laughs> Very similar <laughs> letters, yeah. Yeah. Are you vegetarian? Tissue, just no. melt where it So, it's have you ever included a ham bone in that? I... No, because well, I usually don't have a hand bone, yeah. but I should. You should. So it's a tissue issue, Jeremy? Tissue issue. For the most part, because of disease control and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's about... It's about Bio waste. See, yeah. that was, that was it, hypothetically, my dad was really concerned about. Bio waste? Your dad was, was hypothetically the, concerned? Like, hypothetically, <laughs> no, no. No, not that my dad knows that there's something dangerous. Yeah, your your hypothetical dad right. was hypothetically exactly. concerned. Hypothetically, in this situation that I'm creating, <clears throat> I'm, I am foresee that if this was real, my dad would be really concerned that there would be diseases. And I was like, Well, we get that question a lot, dad, too. You're being hypothetical right now. Yeah. Yeah, hypothetical dad needs to stop being so hypothetical. Well, first off, hypotheticology, I believe, is contagious. So, can, can, is, it, is, he, is he right? Can I get diseases? Can I Should you? I touch it? You can get, you can diseases. get diseases from everything. Yes. Yep. You actually have diseases. What's funny is, is that where I work, uh, we deal with plasma and blood all day. And we put it in a regular trash bag, and we are not allowed to say it's bio-waste. And the state doesn't acknowledge it as being bio waste. You know what? If they did, this is the nebulous nature. Right. If they they did, did, they wouldn't be allowed to take it. No joke. Yeah. Hypothetically, that's that's how I got what I hypothetically have. Is this the same situation? Somebody was like, hypothetically, I have to put this into the garbage. The difference is, is that if. For some odd reason, a random police officer shows up at my tattoo shop mm-hmm. and sees that we have blood covered paper towels in our trash can. They're not going to wonder where we got those blood covered paper towels in our trash can. Right. If someone comes into your house as a police officer and notices that you have human remains in your freezer, there's a good possibility they're going to start to be a little bit more suspicious. Yeah, it might about be some follow up questions there. I knew a guy once. No, I knew a guy once that just had animal specimens in his car and fake bones in his car 
and we almost got swatted. Oh, that was me. That was it, yeah. (laughs) That was me. I think we've done the story before, but tell it again, please. And the uh, the animal control guy showed up, and yeah. They they cordoned off the block, didn't they? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they cordoned off the block, because he had a kitten hanging, or he had a cat hanging from a tree, so that the... No, 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 so Do you lead with the human remains and the chipmunk on the 911 call? So, so <laughs> many police officers showed there up. There were so many. So I have a question. Is that dead? Is that dead? Is that dead? Is what is dead? that? So kids were asking if the dead animals were, were in heaven? Were, just a few. I mostly mean, they like, were just asking if they I mean, were real. It's, it's interesting now that we're all talking about it. Like, how, how heavy... On the the number mark for kids in all these questions, like the is it real one? That was eighty five percent. Eighty five percent. I mean, I think me and Jeremy talked about this not too long ago as well. Like, it's a technology thing, it is. right? Yeah, you know, like. Oh my gosh! Well, I mean, you, if you think about it, when I was have, a little was kid, it, was it your mic? Which one with the um three D printing? Oh, I had that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I had a guy was, come up because this is Maker Fair, and we had an actual uh, juvenile lion spine. And a guy came up and he, he's like messing with it. And he's like, is "This three D printed," which is literally <laughs> the same question as, "Is it real?" Is it real? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "I mean, when I said I said technically yes if you count DNA as a three D printer." <laughs> it was kind of myth. When I was a kid, you know, I, I lived in New Miami, and my dad was a hunter, and all of his siblings, all my uncles were hunters, and their friends were hunters. So I saw dead animals mm-hmm. all the time. I mean, most of what I saw was dead deer, dead squirrels, dead rabbits, that kind of thing. But there was never a point where it even occurred to me that I can remember looking at that stuff and being like, oh my God, is that real? Right. Right. Like, I just knew knew it was real because it was right there in front of you. Right there in front of me. And my neighbor, his name was Lech Trent. Lech Trent? Lech Trent. I like him already. And Lech Trent was skinning rabbits in the front lawn, and I happened upon him some bright summer day. And how he would do it is, is he would pop their heads off.